Yo, what's up? My name is Dominique McClellan, writer, director, producer, and I'm on set of Mic Check with Stylus B. 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 Hello and welcome to Mic Check with me, the one and only Silas B, the only show where we're bringing you the latest and greatest in the entertainment industry. And today is no different from the others. I have with me a writer, a producer, and director who has won awards and really just changed the lives of those he has been around. Please give it up for Mr. Dominique McClellan. How you doing? I'm great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. You like your intro? Yeah, that was a lot better. A lot better. Than, <laughs> a lot better than what? Than most. Than oh, most. oh. <laughs> I'm about to say, what am I being compared to? <laughs> well, even though I like to introduce my guests, I always like for them to, you know, look in the camera, connect with the audience, and tell them who they are and what they do. So go ahead, because you can always do it better than me. You know you better than anybody, right? Absolutely. So go Absolutely. ahead and tell them who you are. Okay. All right. And uh, where am I looking? Right here. Right here? Mm -hmm. Okay. So yes, uh, so, yes. Hi, my name is Dominique McClellan. I'm a writer, director, producer. And, um, yeah, I'm from Mississippi, believe it or not. And I'm down here in New Orleans pursuing the dream. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And no, you're living the dream. Well, yeah. You don't yeah. surpass yeah. pursuing. That's very, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to know. That's very humble <laughs> of you. I mean, you've won awards for your work. Right. And it's across different medias. I mean, we're talking stage plays. We're talking screenplays. You can't just say you, you, you're trying, you, you're doing. So tell me, how did you end up in New Orleans living the dream? Uh, well, actually, um, I moved here in 2012. Okay. And uh, it was after I had uh, finished, uh, finished college mm -hmm. and uh, finished my military com commitment. Okay. I was a military veteran. Thank years. you for your service. You know we have to say that we appreciate you. Well, yeah, absolutely. You know it's always an honor to be able to uh, to serve the people, mm -hmm. especially my community. But um, but back to the back to the question. Um, I, I finished college, mm -hmm. and um, you know I was kind of uh, unsure where I wanted to yeah where I wanted to go as far as like to pursue mm -hmm. my passion. Um, and so you know. Had options. Yeah, of course. Um, L.A., Atlanta, New York, uh, New York. Um, but you know, I chose I chose New Orleans because I felt like, you know, being an artist, uh, being a, a writer, being a director. Mm -hmm. um, and at the time, I was doing a lot of acting as well. Yeah. Um, I felt like you know I could move to these places like mm -hmm. L.A., New York, Atlanta, but I also felt like. I would only be able to grow so much because there's so many other people mm -hmm. like you in areas like that. So right. it's, it's very competitive. Right. And so you spend more time competing than you, you do nurturing your craft right. and growing. So I felt confident enough that I could move to an area where the industry may not be as big and the opportunities may not be as plentiful. Mm -hmm. But I felt confident enough in my abilities to just create my own yeah. uh, content, create my own work that I could, you could basically put me in a desert and I'll, I'll survive. Right. Like I'll figure it out. I'll mm -hmm. figure out how to thrive. And so being that New Orleans wasn't as competitive yeah. as the other markets, I felt like, okay, I can either go to this, to, to this big pond where mm -hmm. there are a lot of fish, a lot of big fish, and I'm just a small fish trying to like get your pee wet. Yeah, you know, and that's or, bad because you're a fish. <laughs> <laughs> or you know, I can I can move to I can move somewhere where I could be the big fish. Mm -hmm. You know, and so that's um, that's part of the reason why I chose New Orleans. And mm -hmm. then you know, just being from the South, um, Mississippi, mm -hmm. you know, only four hours away, not far from home. But um, after Before visiting, far enough, yeah, yeah. After visiting, I felt like there's a lot of opportunity mm -hmm. here. Um, it's beautiful, it's rich in culture, lots and lots and lots of stories mm -hmm. in this city. So, in a nutshell, that's kind of what led me to to New Orleans. <laughs> well, welcome. Thank I'm you. glad you stayed. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, I know, I mean, I personally know of a lot of your works, but 
I want them to kind of know like how you started out. So yeah, you, you kind of figure out where you want to be, but then how do you get into writing and acting, directing, or do like how do you get into those things? Well, um, as far as writing, I've I've always been a writer. Mm-hmm. Um, even as a child, I I wrote and I drew things. Mm-hmm. My parents actually thought I was going to be an artist, okay, a painter, okay, because I drew on everything. It was just <laughs> never, um, but they didn't know that I was a a writer. Mm-hmm. That was something that I just did in private. But okay. um, from writing poems when I was younger to writing, uh, taking, when I was in like junior high, I used to take these songs that I would hear on the radio, like R&B songs, mm-hmm. like by um, Keith Sweat, mm-hmm. or uh, who was another one, like Montel Jordan, or, you know, songs that I like, even songs about like 702. You know, okay. This is throwback, this is like way back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was nice uh, 90s songs, and I would rewrite them, you know, with my own words. You rewriting the song. I would rewrite the song. See, I do that too, but it's just because I don't know the words. Oh, yeah. I didn't know I was rewriting <laughs> <laughs> When I sing along, I realized I have rewritten the song. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you rewriting classics. Right, yeah. I would just rewrite it with my own words. Okay. And, whatnot. and you know, that was kind of like my thing. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of where this love for writing yeah, started, started out. out. But I, I read a lot. Okay. Too. That's the key reading like I read a lot like we had this shelf that was like 10 feet no it was like 8 feet tall <laughs> yeah. and I remember my parents they had invited this guy to the house and he was selling books mm-hmm. and my parents ended up buying the Britannica Encyclopedia mm-hmm. collection so it's encyclopedias A through Z then 1, 2, 3 and so I would find things to read in all of those encyclopedias like every day wow you know yeah um yeah i read a lot yeah and it could have been because of the love or because it really wasn't much to do out of mississippi (laughs) where i'm from i wasn't gonna say that (laughs) i was gonna just go with your love of words i wasn't gonna say that that (laughs) might But nevertheless, whatever the case, right? Whatever yeah. the case may be. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, reading uh, definitely contributed. But um, but yeah, so kind of formulated a love for writing mm-hmm. and and just sticking with it, even though I didn't know that it could lead to anything. Like mm-hmm. all throughout my military career, you know, I still wrote. Yeah. I used to write the most amazing letters. Like, you know, if I had a, a girlfriend or someone mm-hmm. that I was interested in. My letters used to be on point. <laughs> like, so you had a letter game. Like, don't yeah, don't make me write your letter. You know, my pen, <laughs> I, I, my penmanship was really, really nice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> you like, just read. Before you make your decision, just read this. Yeah. This, this. You might not be the same after yeah. this right here. Yeah. You know, right, but, but the thing is, writing is so powerful. The written word is so mm-hmm. powerful, and people take it for granted. They do. It, it, but it, it is, laws are written. That's yeah. how powerful it is. They're not just spoken. They're written. That's how powerful that's a word. the written word is. Yeah, that's a, that's a word right there. That's message. Yeah, words are powerful. They really are. And so, and I'm bringing this somewhere. I'm talking about writing more than the other things that mm-hmm. you asked me about, like write, uh, directing and producing mm-hmm. and acting. But the thing about writing is no one has a job in this industry without the writer. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Without without a script, mm-hmm. you don't have a story. Without right. a story, you don't have a story to tell. You can't hire a director. You right. can't hire an actor. You can't, he, he, you, you can't hire a crew. You can't do business with other business to right. help support your film. Like, no money is made without the written word. That's why writing is so essential. Even scripted shows are written. Yeah. Even the news is written. Like, yeah. we read from, you read from a teleprompter. Like, everything is, is written. Yeah. Yeah, I, I always said, like, I had a love for words. You know, like, I had a passion for speaking and writing it down. Because I feel like to say it is one thing, to read it is, a, is another. Because you and I may read the same book and get total different things from it. You know what I mean? Whereas when it's spoken, there's a tone given. So you kind it kind of guides where it goes. But when it's on paper, it's like you can take that and take it anywhere. 
So I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a nerd for words. That's just, I, I'm, I'm the same way. I'm a lover of the, of the written word um, more than anything. And like you just said, you do different genres. So I, I know that you do music, right? Mm -hmm. And now I know that you rewrote classics as a very young lad. <laughs> but so, <laughs> so the point is, you know, in right in music, there's writing, in acting, there's writing, and like, like you just said, it starts with the word. So that's powerful that you even look at it that way because I also feel like that curtails how you shape a project too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If it doesn't start off strong there, then where can it go from there? Absolutely. Yeah, so that's pretty awesome. So, okay, you are a lover of words and your letter game is on point. So if, if he's singing your letter, don't read it because then you might, you might be in love. That's it. His letter game is just <laughs> that serious. <laughs> but how do you get to a point where, because you've won, won awards at different film festivals, I mean, you're really like, out here doing it so yeah okay you love to write yeah you come to New Orleans and but at what point do you start saying I'm gonna submit I'm gonna do this you know what I mean like when do you get to that place okay so um I think before even before all of that you know you have to kind of figure out what it is that you want to do mm -hmm. you know figure out what it is that you're passionate about is, is that what you want to do right. or do you want to just you know work and be successful whatever right. that looks like for you um, because I, I know a lot of successful people mm -hmm. who are not happy because they didn't follow their passion. Right. So that's the first thing you need to figure out. Right. And that's the choice that I made when I uh, I didn't re-enlist in into the military because I wanted to follow my passion. Yeah. I left a really, really good life um, in the military. Mm -hmm. A really, really good life. At, by this point, I'd be sitting really, really nice. But there was something else that was calling me. Mm -hmm. You know, the only thing I knew since I was 17 was wearing a uniform. Yeah. Wearing a uniform. Like, so to to separate myself from mm -hmm. that, to pursue this passion, it was, it was, it was frightening. Yeah, absolutely. Like, it was, it was, it was uncharted territory. Yeah. Really. And it was something that I wasn't sure about. And you're coming from a very structured situation yes. to a place that has no real format of you do A, B, C, and D. It's, you know what I mean? They're, it's a completely, it's night and day. Right. So yeah, I would be afraid too. Right. But you did it. Right. Right. And yeah, so, um, but but that's because the, the, the passion over, it overshadowed that fear. Mm -hmm. Like the... It's, it gets to a point in your life where something that you yearn mm -hmm. for, it becomes so strong mm -hmm. that nothing else matters. Yeah. You don't even matter anymore. Yeah. And that's what happened. It's like if I have to move to New Orleans and live out of my car, mm -hmm. that's what I'll do. Mm -hmm. And I say that because that's what happened. Yeah. I moved to New Orleans and I, sit, I spent six months living out of my car. Mm-hmm. Because you know, I didn't have the resources financially. I didn't yeah. know anyone here. Yeah. Um, so it was just, it was a tough, it was tough getting started. I, mm -hmm. You know, I have to admit. Um, but I, I never lost sight of the goal. You know, it forced me to be resourceful. It forced yeah. me to use the tools that I, that I amassed while I was in the military. And just through my upbringing, I had mm -hmm. a, a very structured upbringing that was centered around work and achievement mm -hmm. and a lot of exposure to a lot of different things so just using those life lessons to get me to a point where I could find stability here yeah you know finally found a couch to crash on yeah finally found a room to rent finally found my own place yeah. you know years later but the point is figuring out what it is that you're passionate about and most of the time, you don't have to figure it out because it's going to beat you up. Yeah, head, yeah. You know, and then just following that passion and, yeah. and believing, believing. That's that's the other key. It's just believing through no no matter what, mm -hmm. no matter no matter what happens, no matter the obstacles that may uh, 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 present themselves to you. Mm -hmm. Just keep believing and you keep pushing past it. And it sounds so cliche. Because you hear that so much. Just believe, yeah. just believe. But it's so true. Right, which is why it's said so much. Because it's so true. Because if you so don't believe, then how do you get past living in the car? How do you get past 
you know, crashing on a couch. If you don't believe in what you're doing, there's no way to be okay with those situations. And then you, what I call you clock out by clocking in. Because then you give up on your dream and you follow somebody else's. Mm -hmm. And then you work for the person you could have became. Right. You know what I mean? So I think that, like, I agree. That's why you say believe, 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 and you keep pushing. Because it won't always be, you know, all wins. Sometimes it'll be slow. Sometimes it will be trying. You know what I mean? But if you keep going, that's when you get to see the results that you want to see, you know? And I think that's, for me, that's why I started doing my check. Because I see so many people like yourself flourishing. And I met you years ago. You know what I mean? And I know what you had envisioned then. But you weren't doing that yet. Mm -hmm. And I saw the progression. You see what I'm saying? And now I know tons of people know you. And all they know is now. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Right. So that affects how people move. Like, oh, okay, I'm just doing it and it's just going to happen. But they don't know the backstory of how you had to get to that place and the sacrifices you had to make and your, your situations and how they changed. You know, and you being someone who came from a household that was structured and being, like you said, in a comfortable situation, it's not even about the fact that, oh, I was already struggling and that's why I was okay with struggling. You came from a comfortable situation and went into a struggle to follow your passion. You see what I'm like? I feel like those stories aren't told. Right. Like, I, I made a choice to do something and whatever came along with that, I dealt with that as it came. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's, I commend you for that and I've seen you do that. So now my question is, you're writing, do you decide I want to direct and produce my own stuff? Or is that just, did that fall into you? Or that, was that always a part of the passion as well? Well, I, I knew I wanted to make movies. Okay. I, I knew that. Okay. I didn't know what all that entailed. Mm -hmm. You know, again, um, coming from a small Mississippi. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, 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 it's, and it's not a slight, it's just the truth. Yeah. We, when I was coming up, mm -hmm. where I was located, we just didn't have a lot of exposure to yeah. a lot of things, especially in that regard. You mm -hmm. know, when you think about acting or, or making movies mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. things like that, it was just you no. Know, you just you work. Yeah. You know. Like yeah. We, we had a farm. We grew everything. Did you Did you work on the farm? The farm was life. I cannot see you on a farm. Oh yeah. Yeah. I can't see. We, well, all can, I need to see pictures. I need. Proof. I need <laughs> yeah, pictorial it's, proof. It's, no, it was, you know, I, I tell I tell people, you know, everything that, everything that old McDonald had, we had that and then some. <laughs> okay. Like, yeah, like it was, no, it was legit. Like that's, we lived off of what we grew. Wow. Um, that's just honest to God truth. Like we had it. goats, chickens, geese, cows, horses, <laughs> okay. pigs. I would have never right. guessed that. <laughs> but that's because of my, per I would never have guessed <laughs> that you lived on the farm, worked on the farm, and yeah. had so many animals. Yeah. Like That's crazy. Was, yeah. Okay, continue. <laughs> that is neither here nor there. I'm just, I was just shocked. <laughs> but yeah, that's, yeah, that was, uh, but, you know, needless to say, you know, I didn't have a lot of exposure. I mm -hmm. just had my dreams. Right. Like, I knew what I saw. I was like, okay, I want to do that. I want to make Right. Music. I didn't know how to go about it. Um. I went to the military, I came back home, mm -hmm. and I went to college. Uh, it was like a, a junior college. Mm -hmm. I actually went to college for nothing that was related to what I wanted to do. Uh, I got uh, sponsored to go to college to take this course um, by this company. Mm -hmm. And while I was in college, um, I took a creative writing class. Okay. And... Um, I did really good. Mm -hmm. You know, the, I had the, for English creative writing, I had the same teacher. And after the two years, she was like, you are an amazing writer. And um, I know you have a a, a job waiting mm -hmm. for you. Um, it was uh, at the Nissan plant. Okay. Um, working as a machine and computer tech or something okay. like that. That's what I was. But she was like, you should really consider furthering your education and doing something as it relates to your writing. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, well, I do want to make movies. <laughs> so I had to make a decision yeah. to go and get this job, mm -hmm. working at the Nissan plant, making about, starting out, I think it was like between $26 to $28 an hour. Mm -hmm. Or furthering my education and figuring out how to pursue something. Your dream. Yeah. So I made the decision to go to college, 
uh, to continue going to college. So I transferred to Ole Miss mm -hmm. and I studied television production. Okay. They didn't have a film school. That was the closest that thing that the they had. Thing, but you were you were on the path. Yeah, yeah, you know. But I said all that to say that had not my teacher put that in my mm -hmm. ear, I can't truthfully say whether or not I would have pursued it. Yeah. Because, again, like a different opportunity was put in front of right. me. Right. And so I said all that to say a lot of times it don't be you. It'd be the universe. Mm -hmm. You know, like, she swayed my decision. Because mm -hmm. I was going in a totally different place. Right. I'm like, oh, $26, $28 I'll an sign hour for that. in Mississippi? Yeah. Like, yeah, <laughs> let me get that. You know? Right. But she intervened. Mm -hmm. and, and I always thank her for that. Because I feel like that was one of those moments yeah. that changed the course of my history. Yeah. You know? And so, um, you know, I went to college, studied television production, all that, uh, all that good stuff, and um, I, I think I think my sophomore or junior, I think it was my sophomore year. They had a film class. It okay. was just one class. That okay, they look at them. So I was like, look oh, at them. <laughs> you know, <laughs> let me take this one class right, right. on filmmaking. It was just one. It wasn't even a program. That was one <laughs> class. So I took that class, and I, I was there all day, every day, like. Like it was, yeah, you know, like you like my life sleep, depended on it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we had to do a short film, you know. They gave the, as our project, so mm -hmm. I, you know, I did that. Um, it was the best. It was the best out of our class, mm -hmm. you know. Got so I excelled in that class. Then that summer they had like a a workshop, so I took the workshop, mm -hmm. and um, after that, you know, things just started falling in place. Right. You know, so it, it wasn't entirely just me saying, okay, I'm going to go do this. There were other things that, that happened. That just started happening. Right, right. You know, so a lot of times it's it's the universe and yeah. you have to listen. Yeah, yeah. You have to listen because that $28 was sounding really good. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was right here. Yeah, it really She was. said that, but, but yeah. But you, but you chose what you knew would feed you more than just financially. Right. Because that's feed, really what, exactly, because that's what, what really matters. I think a lot of times we go with the money and then like you said, just successful friends who aren't doing what they want to do with their life, mm -hmm. you end up unhappy. So then you feel broke inside and that's a different type of broke right. than a financial broke. You know what I mean? So you go and you take the one film class <laughs> that turns into other classes and you're in school for it and you start writing and then you start doing, you did a short film, but then you started doing stage plays first. Yeah. So how, how do we get to stage plays? Because we did oh, film. Oh my goodness. Um, so I, during my military tenure or career, um, I got deployed to Iraq. Okay. And, you know, I told my mom, I was like, mom, while I'm there, I'm going to come back with a movie script. Okay. I'm going to go over there and I'm, while I'm there, I'm going to write a movie script. Mm -hmm. And she was like, yeah, I know. If you said you're going to do it, you're going to do it. So, so we get over there. Boom, boom, boom. You know, months, months go by. We get settled and whatnot. Right. And I start writing. I start writing, you know. Um, my At some point, morale was kind of like back and forth, you mm -hmm. know, as far as with the troops and things like that. It's just normal, you know. You miss being home and right. things like that. So our commander, you know, he came to us and he was just, you know, he suggested that we find something to do with our time mm -hmm. to take our minds off of being where we are. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Away from home and, you know, just in the situation that we're in. So I was like, well, I write. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't have any problems. But I thought about my troops. And, like, a lot of them don't have that kind of outlet. Yeah. So what can I do to... Uh, how can I do something to uh, include them in something that yeah. we can do together? So I was like, well, I'm writing a movie script. I could write like a little movie that we could shoot. I got my camcorder, you know, it was a little DV cam. Yeah, we come a long way. Oh, we done came a long way. <laughs> so I was like, I could write like a little movie, like we could do a skit. Mm -hmm. So I started writing that, but it didn't really, just wasn't coming together. Then I was like, this movie that I'm writing, I could put it on stage. Mm -hmm. I ain't never 
ain't seen no play. <laughs> I ain't never been to no play. Other than like our church Christmas skit. Right. You know. But I said I'm going to do a play. So I start, I wrote this play called The Wedding Party. And uh, I had auditions with the troops mm -hmm. in the desert. You know, when I was, <laughs> it, was, it was the most. It's definitely something that's going to distract you from what's going on. I mean, you call in auditions. Yeah, it was. It was <laughs> you, and you have to. If you've never been deployed, if you know, in a deployment environment, you wouldn't even understand how ludicrous this idea was. I, I haven't been in this ludicrous to me. You understand what I'm saying? Like auditions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we out here. We out here. <laughs> you talking about auditioning people for a stage play. Right. Nevertheless, they came. Yeah, they, they, they came. <laughs> um and so, you know, went through the process, um, you know, got a cast mm -hmm. and you know, I went to the chapel. We, you know, we had a chapel where we attend service and stuff like that. I was like, look, I need musicians. You know, I need a band. so you know, they have a band. Oh, and then you're gonna add in oh. Iraq because you're fully committed. Yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> why so, not? Right. Why? Why you add it? Add a band. Add a band. I wrote songs to it. You know, and me and the the uh, pianist. You know, we went over the songs and composed them and things like that. Um, but I didn't have a space. We had like our rec center, mm -hmm. but it just, it wasn't suitable. Okay. It was just a big hall with the stage and the flat. I was like, I don't like it. So I'm just looking and looking. And, and we have this place where, you know, they'll let us watch a movie. Like the new movies that mm -hmm. come out, we watch them. And it's theater, but it's okay. old. It's old. It's dusty. All that good stuff. Real, yeah. It fit the environment. <laughs> So I'm in there and I'm like, man, this stage just isn't deep enough. It's only like this, you know, because you got right, a Right, you got a whole band. So I'm walking and I see the screen move and I'm like, it moved. So I, like, it must be something behind it. So I go around and it's just like miles of stage, just open <laughs> space back there. It's a literal, like it's an actual performance right. space. So I asked the, 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 the people who were running the theater, like, mm -hmm. does this screen come up? It's like, no, we can push it back. I was like, this is it. That's it. That's it. So it all came together. So, you know, I, 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 I made posters. I made flyers. I made posters that were 10 feet tall and 8 feet wide. I kid you not. They had this big machine that just, it'll make stuff as long as you want. So I was like, wow. give me the biggest posters you can make because, and I'm going to make it hot pink. With the guy and the girl in the tuxedo and a wedding dress. And I want the people that's flying over to, to be see. able to see it from the sky. And it worked. And there were so many testimonies. There were so many relative stories to what was going on in the play. So many tears. So many yeah. troops coming to me. Thanking me. For the story for doing that. Mm -hmm. it, it reminded them of home. It took them to a place. It's, it was just so much. And in that moment, I knew this is what I need to be doing. Yeah. This is my calling. And again, it's one of those moments where you don't say this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. It's something that shows you what you need to be doing. I could I could have told you that when you held auditions and got a band though. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when it went from a distraction to a full on production, that's what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> but I'm glad you had the moment. Or we wouldn't get to have all the great projects that you've done. And now the wedding party is like torn up. I mean, you about to hit all everywhere. Yeah. So later this year, we'll uh, we plan on getting on the road uh, yeah. later this fall. So. Uh, just gearing up for that, you know, and, and it's one of those things where, you know, I've done the show several times, but it's like, it's one of those things that just works. Yeah. People genuinely enjoy it. Well, it's comedic. You know, it's everybody's story, even though it's told in a way that it's their story. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you get what I'm saying, like when you see it, there's stuff that you can pull from it from your own life. So I get it. And it's music. I mean, it's a good time is what it is. It's a good time on stage. Mm -hmm. So I can get why they buy into it, why they're there for, why they want to see it. And you play a, a hilarious character. 
Do the voice. No. <laughs> you don't want to do the voice? <laughs> well, you'll be doing it all fall long, so it won't matter. If you do it, you either do it now here with my check with Tata T, or you're going to do it later on, on, on the tour. Yeah, you have to bring me back. All right, all I right, fine. I know it take a minute for you to get there. See, I was going to ask you to do MLK for me, too, because that would receive rave reviews when you did that character. So that's not your play, but that's one of the characters when you were acting that you played mm-hmm. that was, like, profound. So, you know, any character you want to give me is what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, we here for it. So, you know, take your time to figure that out because you don't you bother stuff. So now I'm on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll... Um, Which one are you going to do? I'll, I'll work it out in the back of my mind. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, you tell me, when you ready... You say, I think I'm ready. And we'll go back to that. Okay. <laughs> but in the meantime, I know you have the tour coming up in the fall. You have any other big things that coming that you're excited about? Um, so the tour, um, I'm actually shooting my next short film mm-hmm. this spring. And um, centered around. Uh, so the thing about my work, I like mm-hmm. to uh, make sure that I'm addressing things. That, that go on in our in our community, right? You know, to, to have a, a social commentary about it mm-hmm. in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Uh, my last film, Silence Is Compliance, mm-hmm. you know, it dealt it kind of centered around the Me Too conversation. Yeah. Um. So this next film, we're gonna really tackle the subject of gentrification. Okay. Um. So that's that's the next project that's coming up. Yeah, which is a major thing, not just here, right? Uh, all over. Right. So I, I think that you, you touch on hot topics that need to be discussed, but you cover it in such a, I'm gonna say careful and thoughtful way. You know, it's always thought provoking, even with silence and compliance. The way that you handled that script was amazing, and I don't want to, I don't want to give it away because if you haven't seen, it, I want you to go out and see it, um, and just. It's just, it's just, I want to say empowering, but I feel like that's not enough, if that makes any sense. Um, the script deals with, like you said, the Me Too movement. And I think you had a hashtag, we had a hashtag going uh, when it was going um, on. It wasn't Me Too, it was I Too. Mm-hmm. So adding in that the Me Too movement didn't really have a certain face or race or gender you know, um, and just seeing it from a different perspective, it was it was really amazing. Mm-hmm. It was really amazing. So that's what I want to know. If they haven't seen your work, if they haven't, you know, checked out anything, where can they go to find um, out what you're doing and what you have going on? Well, I have my, my personal website, mm-hmm. um, DominiqueMcClellan.com. That's the probably the easiest way to just kind of stay abreast of um, everything that I have going on. Uh, it's pretty simple. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I keep it updated regularly. Okay, and are your films on there, or is it a, a place they can go to get that? Yeah, so the films, uh, the films that are are watchable, are on there. And if um, so, I have a film that's um, streaming on a on a certain platform, but the the link to be able to view that film mm-hmm. is, is on the website as well. Nice. Um, so yeah, it's my first little distribution deal. Yeah. Okay. Fancy me, you. <laughs> 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 I'm really, really proud of you. So you have the, it's going to be the first of many that you can bet on. Like, it'll be the first of many for sure. Mm-hmm. So you have the new short film coming out mm-hmm. um, in spring, right? Well, you're shooting we'll it in shooting. spring, right? Yes. And then you have the tour in the fall. The tour in the fall. Um, the tour is, so the tour goes through the fall. Then we come back in 2020, uh, pick up the tour, and we mm-hmm. do two more. So we're doing three legs, fall of 19, uh, 2019. The first half of 2020 to mm-hmm. the latter half of 2020. Got so it. So we're trying to cover uh, the southern region. Got it. Houston all the way to Atlanta. And that was brilliant because you you got um it was a little well, a little while back you purchased your tour bus. <laughs> like this is this is how you the way that your mind works I think is amazing. Okay, so you say to yourself, I'm gonna do this. You make a list of things, or maybe you don't. I don't know, but it's like. And you know that there are certain things that you want to hit up on. And then you just start kind of checking them off. Right. So it's like, I want to do a tour. I, you know, I want my own bus. Oh, here's the bus. And I'm going to come up with the schedule. Oh, here's the schedule. Oh, I'm going to get the cast. Like, I love that because you approach it as a um, a checklist versus a dream 
or a hope and a wish and a prayer. You get what I'm saying? Right. Um, and I feel like that's why you get things done. Yeah, I mean that's that's pretty spot on. Um, I love I love. It's about the work, mm-hmm. you know, like on the on the broad scale. Mm-hmm. But I just love checking things off the checklist. Yeah, I'm a checklist. Like I, I, I get so much. Even when I was working a nine to five, mm-hmm. you know, I tell my my employers or my supervisors, whatever, just make a list of everything you want me to do. I get it done by the end of the day. <laughs> Is that how you said it? Yeah. Okay. Like, if if you want it done, put it on the checklist. It's gonna get done by the end of the day. Yeah. Like, it brings me joy, because for me, that's how I, I know that I want to achieve mm-hmm. a lot of things. Yeah. Checklist and checking things off of that checklist is how I measure. How, how close I'm getting absolutely to those achievements. Because there should be a measurement because that keeps you in line with getting it done. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. So, that's basically how I approach everything and how I approach, you know. Yeah. Well, I wanted to have award-winning writer, producer, and director on my show, Mike Check With Thousands, <laughs> so I can check that off. <laughs> and we want to thank you so much for coming in. I really am looking forward to all the projects you have coming up. And I always give my guests a little something just as a token of our appreciation because we know that all the artists that we have on here are busy and accomplishing things. So, you know, for you to stop in and come and see us, we appreciate you. So, I want to give you a little something from the Mike Check team. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Do I pull it out? Now? You can. It's up to you. If you want to keep it a secret, you want to pull it out, it's up to you. Um, did anyone else pull theirs out? <laughs> <laughs> yes, they did. Oh, they did. Yeah. Okay. You're going to keep it a secret now? Different. All right. <laughs> See how different that's, that's what, <laughs> if you're going left, he's going to go right. But that's how you create your own lane. Um, until next time, thank you so much for joining us. Remember, never let anyone dim your light or mute your mic. Peace. Mm-hmm.